Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. Today we're going to make a kick with big click and a very low subby area. And it's very typical in Orjan Nielsen's stuff, so if you're familiar with his work, this is the kick that probably will be for you. And we're just going to kind of create and emphasize that really clicky part and the really subby part and how it's uh, mixed at the same time. So we are using kick two here. Uh, by Sonic Academy, so you can use other kick generators. You can buy the samples, uh, where to buy samples with that style of kick, I'm not sure, but you, you should be able to find them. Uh, but you can use Big Kick, usually that's going quite cheap uh, on Plugin Boutique, or you can get Vengeance Metrum, that's another good one as well. And a few other synths can also do a very good job of that style kick as well. So this is the track that I'm working on at the moment, creating some really low subby areas. And if you're interested in creating this low subbiness here using a bit of resonance, then let me know. You're not going to be able to hear it that well without headphones. But it's uh, it's quite powerful on the low end and works really well with these type kicks. So um, let's take a look at the kick. So it's a default kick and I've just tuned it to the track which is in F. And you can see it just has a little bit of a offset bit there but it just sounded better when it was placed in the mix and as you can see there's a bit of a click here and if you look at the amp we've got some amp modulation going on there as well so we'll create a new one and I'll just quickly create it and then you can see the exact workflow so we're going to duplicate that okay and we'll just call this new kick and then at least I know to get rid of this uh, in my track. So there's the kick, and we're going to initialize the preset here in that. So initialize preset, so we get this to start with, which is very close to how it sounds, and I like the simplicity of these kicks. So what you want to do is get the uh, key of your track, which is mine's in F, so let's just drag this down. I had it at about F sharp here just because it sounded better in the mix, uh, but then choose, tuned it down to this F here at 22 hertz. And keep that A, and then we have this. Sounds quite nice. Now, there wasn't as much tail on the other one, and that is down to the amp mod. So let's do some shaping here. That's pretty much all I'm going to do here, and you're going to see this change a little bit. Right, so in the amp mod, what we're going to do is shorten this down. I'm going to keep it at 701 milliseconds there. That's about right for the track. So I'm just going to have it like that. So you can add as many nodes as you want, and you can add more nodes just by double clicking. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut out some of this initial body here using this, uh, which is already here for us, uh, to kind of emphasize the oomph in there. And it emphasizes the click in your kick drum as well. Okay, so if that wasn't there, you've got quite a lot of detail in the start of your kick drum. Let's just turn this click off here. And by removing that section, it hones in on the initial transient of the kick, kind of gets rid of anything that's boxy right behind that section of click, and then gives you the boom there. So I'm just gonna emphasize that tail a little bit more, and then put this click back in. And click 12 works really well. Uh, this is the one that loads as a preset, but you do have plenty of other options here. But I do like this one. And you can choose to high pass it a little bit if you want, just to really isolate it away from the body of this. And we can put that click view in there. So you can see the click is operating to this point here, and then it stops. So that's the bit that we've cut out there. So it's, it's a good little guideline to use, uh, but I'm doing a lot of this by ear. Now by standard, a little bit of boxiness is removed by kick two here. Uh, let's have a listen. OK, 
Okay, so not not much, but it emphasizes the boom because you're getting rid of some of that boxiness out of your um, your kick drum. So I tend not to use this EQ too much. I like to do it all uh, post processing. So that's the kick drum. Okay, so now we're going to load up this, and on the kick drum you can see that I have a compressor. Uh, I've got a multiband compressor, and then I've got some EQ here. So let's just get rid of these plugins that are not in use. The reason for using this one is you are limited with features here, and it kind of hones in on the settings and makes you understand them a little bit more on how they sound because you're limited to a few settings and you can have a little bit of a mess around and you haven't got too much choice. Uh, and this particular compressor sounds really good for these kick drums. I do prefer this one uh, to kind of bring out the warmth. So the first thing you'll notice is it does kind of raise the volume on the left channel a little bit, but that'll be sorted out with the next plugin to kind of get that sub-frequency uh, mono again. So the threshold's kind of the last place that I go to. I start with the attack, so I want a slowish attack, so I've set it up to three, and then uh, the release is at six. And it's a fairly long tail, uh, but I wanted to get some of that boom, so I wanted to make sure the compressor wasn't closing down too quickly. Uh, the ratio is set to 10 to 1, uh, and that is just down to sound. I haven't picked that because that's what you have to do. Uh, that just sounded quite nicely balanced in terms of the compression ratios. And then the threshold and makeup gain were trimmed, obviously, to get the desired effect. So without this uh, compressor, and then with... So you can see what I mean here by it's going up on the left a little bit. And you can see there's hardly anything going through, but it brings up that warmth. Almost seems to focus it more into the center of your mix. Um, but we have got a bit of left and right issues here, but not to worry, we are correcting that with the next plugin. And next in the list, Axis, uh, a multiband compressor. This is by SoundSpot, and for the price at the moment, why not get it? Uh, it's doing wonders for kick drums, and it's so much simpler to use compared to like the the Vengeance multiband uh, and Cubase's own multiband plugins and stuff. It's just a little bit more intuitive, and it just works a real treat. And you get a really good idea of stereo perspective on the bands. Now, on the lower band, on the imaging section, as you can see, the spread is now set to minus 100, and that sticks it into mono straight away. And focusing on that frequency, focusing on that, you can see now the levels are equal, and that is because we've taken the stereo detail away from the low end. And that is honing in the main body of the kick into the center of your mix and giving it more power. Uh, you can see I've pushed up the gain a little bit on the mids, and that is about it. And then compression, nothing. Just leaving it as raw as I can get it. Then on the second band, you can hear this is where the boxiness is. So I've just applied a little bit of compression here to kind of bring down that level but keep that harmonic kind of detail there, but just reduce that boxiness just a little bit more. Then on the third band is more of the upper mid click. So you can see I've just boosted the gain a little bit here and that is it on there. And there is no compression at all. And then finally the highs, you can see I've done nothing there. I've just boosted the mids and there's no compression there either. So it's just a really simple edit. I didn't want to go too crazy with it. Uh, but you get a result like this. So really the magic is happening here in the imaging section by removing the stereo detail from your lows. So it preserves all of that kind of fundamental decency that your kick has to offer. And you can see I haven't made any major adjustments really. If you look at the settings, they're not major. Maybe the most that's going on is here on the lower mids and the boxy area. That's probably as much as it's going. It's all mono, but it's been compressed. And then this section, not really anything happening on the compressor, nothing happening here, but a little bit of a boost. And then the same again here, just 
reducing a little bit the stereo spread and yeah that's focused your kick down the center and just give it more more power so that is a really good way to get rid of the low frequencies like i've shown you before if you go into fab filter pro q3 another way that you can do it is you can do a, a high pass and then you can select stereo placement sides and you can remove the side detail from the lows so then that becomes mono all below there um, but just doing it with a multiband gives you a lot more control over the spread making sure it's fully mono then you've got boosting sections here and then you've got the additional compressor and metering to go with it uh, just it just sounds a lot better in my opinion uh, and then finally we have the EQ so we'll just turn that off a second and you can see I've removed a little bit of boxiness additional boxiness there it's quite a drastic cut and I've boosted the fundamental area of the kick just to give it a bit more weight on top of that compression uh, and then there's a roll off here uh, which should be at 30 and the slope should be 12 damn these magic mice for apple and then i've just done a bit of a high roll off as well because the click was a little bit too wild and that just brings it under control a little bit you can see i brought it down to 11,000 hertz there so let's have a listen and this is with eq on So it just rains in the frequency a little bit. Like the, the one before the EQ sounds really good, uh, but in the mix it was just a little bit too, a little bit too bassy, and it had a little bit too much click on the top, which was cutting through the mix a little bit too much than what I wanted. Which most people want more cut through, uh, but in this instance it needed to be tamed just a little bit. And there we are. I'd probably go a little bit less drastic on this cut here when I'm actually doing the mix. Uh, we are working on a different kick drum at the moment, so I'm not going to adjust that. Uh, and there is a little bit of dynamic EQ going on there as well, just to kind of keep it under control. Um, and that's it. That's uh, to create a Orjan Nilsson style kick. I'm not saying it's exactly his technique and exactly the same. Uh, but that sort of processing is going to get you that sound and then once you couple that with the sub bass You're going to get a really really good warm sound to start layering up on the top of your mix um, And then in terms of it cutting through the mix here So you can see that kicks quite a lot louder, but we haven't done any gain control on that. But this kick drum has been refined to sit in this mix quite well in terms of it not being too bassy uh, on subwoofers and not to be too underpowering at the same time. So it's a nice balance between them all. Uh, if we just get rid of that bass, we don't like that one. Alrighty, that ends the video on the creating a kick. What I'll do for you guys is this kick drum that we've just created, I will bounce it down as a audio sample so you can go and grab this from uh, my webpage, which is linked below. Just follow the demishelen.com page and you can go to the free presets and get all the presets and then I'll put the samples folder there as well for this kick drum. Also, I will put the Kick2 file there as well, so you can load it into Kick2 if you already own the uh, plugin. So, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, click subscribe. Three videos per week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all on trans topics. And finally, hit the like button and drop us a comment if you want to uh, say anything and I get back to everybody. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.